research. Um, I, are you still president of the Mammoth um, Photo Club? Well, I wasn't for a while, and now this past year, I'm president again. Okay, well, good. <laughs> but I'm no longer I'm no longer president of the Four Seasons Club. Oh, after, I didn't realize you were part of it. After 15 years, I said enough. Oh, okay. And um, wow, that's a lot of seasons. I can I'm only here for less than uh, a year, and I, it's 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 a lot. Um, okay, and uh, you were a prior judge with us in 2021, and I didn't go back before 2020, and I know everything was canceled in 2020. So welcome again. My and, pleasure. And uh, we should start, right, Mark? Yeah, okay, I'm gonna mute all and then... Uh... Okay, Alan, can you please unmute yourself? Yep, I unmuted. Okay, and let me just do share. Okay, we're gonna start with uh, group one, which is our beginning to intermediate. There are 12 in, in this particular 12 pictures. And let me uh, go into score contest. So this is not like this. I go, oh, oh, this, oh, is, this open. is open. Open. Okay. Okay. Group one, blue-footed bo booby or bobby, whatever. It's booby. Booby. Yes. Okay. So a couple of things I'm looking for is the eye sharp and are the um, is the plumage on the breast of the bird uh, sharp as well as if it's whether or not it's uh, blown out? So I think I think the image is a tad soft. The bird is well positioned, and I like the way the treatment depth of field in the background. Uh, but the the bird is a, a bit soft, and I think a little bit of the breast is uh, blown out. Let me. Get my thing here. This particular area, just just a tad. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, of texture. The other comment I would make uh, is that your eye is drawn to light areas, and those two areas are very easy to clone out. The larger area, which I guess is the sky. I, I would treat that as well and probably try to darken it by uh, selecting just the sky and uh, trying to diminish its uh, intensity. So I would give this a six. Parking lot dog show. Capturing a moment. Unfortunately, the moment captures a garbage can. So I would clone that out. And uh, it, it, the lighting is harsh, unfortunately. And I think in a picture like this, you, you see the, the woman's face, but you, you really want to see a little bit more of the, uh, the, dog's, the dog's face. So this is the kind of situation where if it wasn't or if it wasn't done, then you put your camera on rapid shutter, you know, rapid fire, and you take a whole bunch with the hopes of getting one or two that really capture the moment. Because I'm sure the dog was moving, and there could well have been other um, shots, other moments that. It, created a uh, potentially better image, a six. Purple flower. Okay, okay nicely done. Good exposure on the flower. Um, it looks like it, um, the, the, um, the format is square. And that being the case, I would suggest that the flower be centered. And that could be achieved very readily by just altering the cropping just a little bit. Uh, so either you want the flower 
to be well off center, not necessarily rules of thirds. But in this case, uh, I think you want to eliminate just a little bit there. And in so doing, you would probably have to crop a little bit here. But that's a minor point. Um, the central part is sharp and well exposed. For a flower, one of the things that I prefer to do is if I don't have a perfect example, I try to clean it up. So this area here, I would clone and try to fill in the leaf, which is pretty easy to do. The other comment I would suggest is that the background, while it's out of focus, is too bright. And to select the background and make it less bright diminishes its impact on the image because you really want to focus. I mean, the leaves of the image of the photo are drawing you right to the center. That's the bright spot. That's where you want everyone's attention. You don't want it in the background. I would give this uh, a seven. Bridge of gold. Okay. Like the composition, very dynamic, moving across, nice colors. Uh, so it's good exposure, good saturation. I would like to have seen a little bit more of the detail under the bridge because it is a significant portion of the image. So those areas could be selected and just brought out, bring out just a little bit of the of the detail. So it's not a black blob uh, under the uh, under the uh, structure of the bridge. A uh, seven. Bottles galore. A good exposure, um, nice capture of, it's it's really someone else's artwork, but the the nature of the, of the uh, subject, the bottles against the brick makes for a rather busy composition. And I think it would be enhanced if you didn't have this bottom portion, that you were merely focusing on the bottles against the brick. Because I, as you have it now, there really are two images, the upper two thirds and then the bottom third. Uh, perhaps this by itself could be an image, I'm not sure. Uh, but it is sharp all over, seven. Afternoon fishing. Okay. Okay. So the boat is well positioned. Uh, I think an image like this, it's preferable if you could see the person's face, more of it, or if there was some action going on, it may not have been as necessary. A couple of minor points. This this fishing rod is going out of the image, and the way to get around it is just clone a little bit of water over maybe this portion here, and no one would know that you've truncated the fishing rod. The other thing I would suggest doing is cleaning up this this wave, make everything clean so that you're focusing on the subject. And I think in this instance, also a slight vignette would draw the viewer's attention to the subject of the fisherman, a seven. French village. Okay.
nice path leading you through the village. So that was a good capture, good composition. The uh, exposure seems a little bit light. I would darken this about maybe half a uh, half a stop. And it's me, but I don't like things that are cockeyed unless they're meant to be, especially if you know if you're using a wide angle lens and you have a lot of keystoning, that's fine. So I would have straightened this out to make it vertical. The other thing I would have done, but I'm not, it's, this is the maker's choice. It looks like an old, it is an old village. And for me, these two antennas aren't compatible with the rest of the scene. Yes, it was there. I would take it out. It's very easy because it's against the sky. Very easy to clone that out. And then I think it would vastly improve the image. And just as in the previous image, I would put a vignette, which causes the viewer to refocus in the center, which will be a little bit lighter. A seven. Love of my life. Well, I don't know if it's the girl or the cat. But the... Um, The cat doesn't seem to be in focus. It's just very fuzzy. The girl's face is sharp, but the cat is not. This whole area is is very soft. And uh, that being the case, you really can't recover much. Although if you have um, topaz sharpen and you sharpen just this area of the cat, it might bring out a little bit more uh, detail. And the other thing, you really don't need these two rings or whatever they are on the on the top of six. Don't tie me up. Okay. A simple yet strong composition. The contrast between the light gray of the rope and this other rope, the red, and then everything else is pretty much blue, I think works works perfectly. One nitpicking item, pull that out, or select it and turn it yellow, which is easy to do. And then I would darken and clone this out. But those are nitpicking items. And uh, overall, it's sharp, well exposed, a seven. Flamingos. Okay. okay. Well, a couple of things. The, the flamingos look like they're going downhill. So I would straighten the image. I like the fact that you've got the birds and their reflection. The other thing I would suggest watching is cutting off a bird. And so what would you do in that instance to get around it? Well, it would be difficult, I think, and, and maybe you could do it if you, if you cropped and then did a little slight bit of cloning in this area, or conversely, Here's your image. It made the point with plenty of other flamingos, those three on the right really don't contribute much. Um, unfortunately, when you have a flock like this, you're going to get merging. So you have those heads merging, these birds are merging. I don't know how you get around that because the birds are constantly moving and you're going to get that unless you stand there for an hour and take a whole bunch of pictures and get lucky. The other big issue I have with this image is that the exposure, it's it's overexposed. You don't see the pink color of the birds or the, the pink tone and the, the, the bodies of the birds seem to be blown out. Oh, six. Sunflower. Yeah. Yeah. 
nice and sharp. I like the contrast between the um, blue sky and the yellow leaves. They complement each other. Um, here's an instance where the maker applied a vignette, but I think was a little bit heavy handed. From my perspective, I like a vignette that the viewer is almost unaware of. And um, so I'm looking too much at that vignette. The other thing is you've, you've got a lot of dirt in this bottom corner. So the flower is well exposed, but the time of day was a challenge because you've got harsh shadows over a good portion of the uh, central part of the sunflower. And I would suggest selecting the darker portions of the central part you know, through here and selectively lighten those and then select the bright portion and selectively darken. And then you've got this area here, which is even darker. And I'm not sure. Well, yeah, there is there is detail. So I would try and even out the harshness of the center part. I think it works well with the with the uh, petals, with the shadow and the the lighting. But again, you can see that the lighting is coming from here, and so I would brighten these petals. And then the other thing, if this was mine, I would darken the greens because they're incidental to your storytelling of the sunflower, a seven. Torch, crown, and book. Well, a very unique perspective to be sure. I'm seeing a lot of artifacts in the sky and here, and I'm seeing a lot of ghosting. So, well, I don't know. I suspect the sky may have been overprocessed, or it's a replacement sky. And the other thing I would suggest in this for this image is to straighten out the image. The statue is on an angle, so it doesn't matter. But this makes a very strong statement, and and that should be straightened out. And then I'm not sure that you need as much of the base of the statue. Having done that, then perhaps eliminating some of the base just to keep the size, the proportion of the image uh, to crop in a little bit on the left and the right, a six. Okay, we're gonna do round two now. We have seven. Purple flower. Mm -hmm. An eight. Bridge of gold. Eight. Bottles galore. Seven. Afternoon fishing. Seven. French village. Seven. Don't tie me up. Nine. Sunflower. Seven. Okay, well, we're going to give the this one first place. Okay, and from uh, from these two, we're going to do a first, uh, second, and third place. Okay. <laughs> okay, the bridge is, the bridge is second, and the flower is third. Open group one, third place, purple flower, Claude, as always, beautiful job. Second place, bridge of gold, Jerry, hey, now aren't you glad you showed up today? 
And first place, Claude again. Wow, that's beautiful, Claude. Okay, now we're gonna do group two open. Yeah, and this is the, the uh, largest contest that we have this for today, 29 inches. Open group two, flying hats. So I like the, the dynamics of the image, but uh, the sky, unfortunately, just didn't cooperate. And unless you want to go through a lot of trouble to replace it, I'm not sure it's, it's worthwhile. Um, I'm actually intrigued by all the blue and then this young lady here with a black gown. Uh, even the seats are blue. The... Um, and I don't mind in this instance that I don't see the faces. It's the celebration. But it's it tends to be, um, I would say, and I don't want to use this pejoratively, uh, more of a snapshot than a uh, an entry into uh, a photo club competition, the six. Mail stock landing. So, unfortunately, it's just not sharp. This is not sharp. And here, it's blown out. I mean, the isolation against the sky is excellent. But now, a general comment, you've got a lot of sensor dust. So, I suggest you bring your camera in and have the sensor cleaned, unless you know how to do it yourself. Uh, but for this level, I mean, the, the capture is good, but unfortunately, it's just not sharp. Um, a six. Natural form. I saw this and I did a double take. Was it the form of a woman or was it the form of something different? And obviously wood. And it's very sensual. I like it very much. Excellent composition and, and um, exposure, great texture. And of course, the background doesn't compete. Really well done, seven. In the playground. Okay, nice storytelling. Yellow and blue always complement each other. I think it's a tad overexposed, maybe a stop, a half a stop. And in this instance, I don't mind not, again, not seeing the faces. It's telling the story through the, uh, the opening, I guess, of the slide. The young girl with the father, I assume. And you, the whole image is leading you to the, uh, the young girl and the gentleman, uh, seven. Iceberg falling, uh, Kenya Fjord National Park. I'm I'm trying to determine how sharp that is. And I think it's a tad fuzzy. And I'm, of course, I'm judging from the broadcast over Zoom, which can deteriorate the, the image. Um, so if this one is fuzzy and like I'm seeing it, I'm going to attribute it to Zoom because the fuzziness is just is slight. So I'll I'm looking that. at it. I'm looking at it on here, and it looks pretty sharp. Okay, so I'm going to ignore that aspect. Um, nice dynamic in in the water, but I don't I don't think this is enough to capture my interest, and it just sort of looks as it is. It's just floating, floating in 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 air. Um, a six. 
figure ground cello cabinet. Good exposure, background doesn't interfere, nice curvature. Um, I'm wondering about the balance of this large yellow area versus the side of the instrument, which to me is much more interesting. You see the curvature, you have shadow, you have light, you see some of the grain. So perhaps, uh, let me get this other tool, perhaps, you know, a crop like that would emphasize the side of the instrument, the curvature, and the yellow would, in a way, balance the black. But having said that, I think it's well done. Good exposure, a seven. In training. <laughs> good exposure, good capture of the moment. Even though you don't see all of her face, you could you see enough to, to get a sense of the in, the in, her, the intensity that what she's addressing her her task um, nitpick that you, you didn't get the entire foot but that's not critical to the storytelling so I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't be concerned about that a seven ghost rider. Interesting technique. I like the texture in the background, the uh, placement of the bike on on that pavement. I think I would have liked to have seen a little bit more in this side of the of the image to give the rider more space to draw. Uh, to write into, and um, let me, okay. I'm just wondering what this is. That's distracting me a little bit, because I want to look at the, the writer deliberately out of focus, which is fine. So I would, I would opt to clone that out, but it's very creative, well done, a seven. Sundown at the Falls. I I like the image, but I it has some challenges, and that is the falls is your subject, and it's dark. Your foreground here. Here, here, here is bright. It should be the other way around. And I think that the image could be cropped a little bit to emphasize the falls. And I would crop it maybe something like this, a little bit more to the left to emphasize the vertical nature of the of the falls and it re-emphasizes that aspect a six village dog looks very formal on this dog um and I think it works well in black and white. He's come a long way along that path. There's nothing to distract the viewer. You're looking at that dog and wondering what is he thinking? What is he doing? Where did he come from? So there's a lot, 
lot in this image of seven. NYC. This almost becomes becomes an abstract between the uh, the structure of the crane and then the structure of, I guess, the building uh, behind it, the reflections. And again, we have yellow and, and blue. That tends to work well, captures your eye. Good exposure, a seven. Dinner on train to Denali. Well, this is nothing to do with Denali or a train. This is a picture of a flower, and here's your picture. All the rest <clears throat> now. All the rest is superfluous. And uh, for a picture of the flower, I would not want to see the uh, this placard. So I I think it's just it would be too much to clone out. Wrong wrong drawing tool. Let me. I'm sorry to hear. Okay. Um. So you've got sky that's blown out that um, is detracting. There's just too much in it to pull your eye away from the flowers. And the flowers themselves, it's, it's fairly, fairly busy, although they're generally well exposed, the six. Color match. Okay. So selective color works well. Whether or not that they were truly yellow, it doesn't matter. That's the vision in this image. Um, the trees are upright. The horizon, I think, is going down a little bit. Although this horizon, maybe that one is, is straight. So that's OK. <clears throat> Um, and the other thing I would consider doing is cloning this part out on the left. It's it's a smidgen of, I guess, a building or a tree, and you don't need that. Um, but I like the notion of the selective coloring in, in, in the image and the verticality of the palm trees, both near and far. Give it, give it a nice and interesting background and, and um, I would give this a seven. <clears throat> Jackson Pollock shoes. Creative, well exposed, well done. I'll nitpick. Where's the tip of the shoe? And if you took multiple shots, maybe you could clone from one shoe, one image to the other, or you could probably extend the bottom of the image and with some clever cloning and content to wear fill, create the toe. Having said that, um, it's still a good capture, good exposure, a seven. You're looking at you. I would really love to have seen a stroke around this because I'm not sure where it ends. That's not an issue for assigning a score. Um, again, very creative, well done. 
you look at that and what you know what is it but whatever the capture was was well done and in this instance you're intrigued i believe i am by the central black you know what is that is that sort of like a black hole in the universe of seven <clears throat> A green turtle bass in the sun's warmth. Sharp. Nothing extraneous in the image. Background is handled well. Um, might suggest given the, uh, well, looking at depth of field, this is a little bit fuzzy here. And it's not in that portion. Um, I, I want to do something to make the turtle stand out just a little bit more from the gravel beach. Uh, as it is, the color tones, tonality, exposure, they, they blend together too much. And you want the viewer to zoom in and focus on the, uh, on the turtle. A seven. Cabanas. Good tonal range, like the deep blacks, the whites that are not blown out. Interesting sky, but the sky is minimized because the sky is not your subject, the subject, the structure of these cabanas. And they, it looks like they go on for infinity. And you've got one path going this way, and then another path going this way. They're not even, and I like that, that the image is not symmetrical for seven. Autumn Bridge. The um, I like the, the nice reflections, nice autumn colors. The um, I'm having a little bit of trouble with with the sky. It just seems weird to me. I don't know. It just Well, if if it was replaced or that's how it was, I'll accept it. It just it just looks strange. Um, and you're drawn in from the two shores down through the water, and that bridge literally anchors the picture. Without that, you don't know where to look. But the two shorelines with the reflections bring you right to that bridge a seven on the edge of the wing good well exposed the uh, underside of the wing you still see uh some of the the detail and texture and the uh for the most part, the mountain is well exposed. I might want to tone down a little bit in there. Uh, but it, another creative uh, creative image that obviously the, the maker was in the plane and saw the opportunity of seven. Little Miss Sunshine. Good exposure, nice expression on the face. I'm okay with her not staring and looking at the uh, at the uh, camera. And the hair is nicely backlit. The background is well handled. It doesn't compete with the uh, with the subject. And the cropping, you've zoomed in to essentially her face, 
and the, everything it was handled quite well. The seven mountains. I um I like the slow shutter speed. I my preference would have been a shutter speed that gave me a little bit more detail in in here, which is taking up such a significant portion of the of the image. Um, it's well exposed. There's a lot going on. But the, the uh, like I said, the um, this is just taking up too much of the image without having much to offer. A six. Iris twin. I like the exposure, the coloration on the irises. I would have liked to have seen uh, just a little bit more of the stem on on this right uh, uh, the the, uh, the, uh, the iris on the right. The concern I have is with the background that was chosen to present the irises. That background is drawing just too much attention. Um, the color competes, its brightness competes, its texture competes, and I want to look and focus my attention on the iris and not the, the background. The background just doesn't, to my mind, complement but competes with the, with the iris uh, six. A very unshy Cameron. So again, is the eye sharp? Because I'm looking at it and it doesn't look sharp. Give me a second. Uh, no, no. It's not. Okay. So first thing with a bird, with a bird or animal or people shot, eyes have to be sharp. The positioning of the of the the bird is good. I would have toned down the the back one. It's very busy and bright, and I'm not sure you can see. I don't think you can see much detail in the dark portion of the bird's neck. A six. Urban cellist. I like this in black and white. I don't see anything extraneous in the image. It was exposed well. It was converted well. You've got nice uh, black, so the tonal range is good. And you've caught the cellist in, uh, at a good moment and looking at you. Uh, and it's almost as if this, I guess it's the fire hydrant, is mimicking the position of the cellist arms, these two connections. Um, very well done. A seven. Three in silhouettes. The silhouette works well, very intense, almost angry looking sky. I think you could have done with just a little bit less and crop, crop that out. And I think I would have moved the tree over a little bit so that my crop would look something like this.
because I do like the um, I do like this structure here, balancing your main subject, the tree. Um, the sky may have been a little bit um, oversaturated, just a tad. I'll accept it as, as it is. It's really dramatic. A seven. Flying high over Alaskan range. Well, for the most part, the exposure is good in the upper part of the image. Um, here, I'm losing a lot of detail. There's a little bit, a little bit of shadow, but I'm losing detail there. And I think in this image, I assume that this this is the wing. I think the wing interferes with your image. The image is about the 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 mountain range, and that wing um, just doesn't belong in this image. Is six tools behind the bicycle? I like the, the shape, nice shapes to the image um, in contrast to the geometry of the of the uh, tulips. For me, th this is just a little bit too busy and garish. And, and that, you know, you get someone else to look at it and they'll go gaga over it. Um, so this just comes down to something very subjective. Um, I'll give it a, a seven, but it it's just a little bit too garish for me. Satsuki Azalea. Okay. So I'm looking to determine in what portion of the blossom is in focus? Doesn't all have to be in focus. At the very least, this should be in focus and it looks soft. So I don't see anything in this image which is sharp. The background, of course, doesn't interfere. That looks good with the with the blossom. But it's got to be sharp somewhere, a six. Bell works in spring. Well, I think this is a little bit underexposed, maybe half a stop. But I'm not sure where to look. And wherever I look, quite honestly, it's not very interesting. Um, I, I think this is weak in in composition. Perhaps if it was just the building and some of the shrubs or trees, it might have been more interesting with the geometry of the of the building as a background. Uh, your sky doesn't contribute. There's very little interest in it. A six. Okay. Well, round two, we have eighteen to score. Natural form. Nine. In the playground. Eight. Hold on. Something happened here. Hold on. Give me a second. All right. I'm not going anywhere. Bigger ground cello cabinet. Eight. Cabinet. In training. Seven. Ghost rider. Eight. Village dog. Nine. NYC. 
Eight. Color match. Seven. Jackson Pollock shoes. Eight. He is looking at you. Eight. A green turtle bass in the sun's warmth. Seven. Cabanas. Eight. Uh, I'm sorry, nine. Autumn Bridge. Seven. On the edge of the wing. Seven. Little Miss Sunshine. Nine. Urban Cellist. Nine. Tree in Silhouette. Seven. Tulip Behind the Bicycle. Seven. Okay, well, we have five, so we're going to have first, second, third, and then uh, two honorable mentions. Okay. Okay, let's just go through them here. Okay. Um, yeah, all right. Go ahead. You keep going. All right, I know. So first place is this one. The, okay. Yeah, that's first. Second mm -hmm. is this one. Yep. Okay. And third is the, is the girl. Okay, here we go. Group two, honorable mention, Village Dog. Dan, once again, you did it. Nice job. Cabanas, Dan, wow, you're on a roll. Third place, Bobby, beautiful eyes. That's really nice. Second place, Dan again. It's your night, Dan. And first place, Dan. Wow, Dan really did a great job this time. He always does. Okay, we're going to do eyeglass group one, and there are only four in this contest. Okay. Okay, uh, okay here we go. So, for scoring this, an additional consideration is the fact that you have a theme. And so, to what extent does the image convey the theme. Would someone that didn't know you had a theme look at the image and say, oh, that's about eyeglasses. So that's an important consideration. And this picture does not achieve that, I believe. It's a picture of two young women that happen to wear eyeglasses uh, in a busy background with a kitchen and so it looks like a, a snapshot from a family visit of six. Patriotic glasses. Okay. It's about the glasses. But unfortunately, this whole part is out of focus. I mean, otherwise it was well executed, good exposure, nice idea. On a black background, I see some, let me clear this, some shadow, which is good. So it doesn't look like the uh, the glasses are floating in space. You've got some, some texture here that could be cleaned up and you've got uh, some more of it over here. But the big issue, it's not sharp, a six. Soft focus.
Definitely about the horses with the dog. Um, I'm not sure how you avoid it, but I don't want to see the photographer's hand in the in the uh, reflection of the glasses. You really have to almost stand to the side and take a take a shot like this and, and do a whole bunch until you don't get uh, busyness in the in the glasses. But it is it does speak of glasses, so I'll give it a seven. Funky glasses. Doesn't look too uh, about wearing those. Um, you know, it's about a funny face, but you know, there's enough impact of the glasses. I'll I'll buy it. Or seven. <clears throat> okay, so we've got uh yeah. Uh soft focus. There were, and then there was the other one, wasn't there? Right, and the other one, right. So one of them we're gonna pick is first place. Yeah, can I see the other one? Oh, well, you know what? Let me do that, and of course you can. Uh, the problem I'm having is that I think the one with the dog is creative, but the one with the boy is is, is done is is more technically correct. So I think I'll go with the the boy. Okay, we'll give him an eight. First place, Claude. Congratulations again. Okay, now for our last contest of the evening, which is eyeglasses, and we have 15 in group two. Try us, please. So the edge of the glasses is sharp. The uh, leading edge of the laptop is sharp. The screen on the laptop has a background, is out of focus, which is I think works works well. Um, good exposure. The background's a, a, a bit busy. I would have liked to have seen more concentration on the eyeglasses and the earpieces of the eyeglasses are a little bit soft and chopped off from the bottom. Um, I'll give us a seven. Selfie reflections in sunglasses. The reflection of these glasses and these lenses works works better than the, the previous one. Uh, I'm judging it though based on its presentation. The um, so I think that works. That's good. The, the uh, clearly it's about the the eyeglasses. Um, I would have cloned some of this out. You don't need it. And there's enough material over here and here to use for cloning. The only question I have is whether or not I like the fact that the person's nose is so out of focus. And I think that's that's distracting uh, because you've got good depth of field with the uh, the brim of the hat the top portion of the hat, the glasses. So I don't know if that was deliberately uh, uh, blurred or not. Um, a seven. Optometrist. Uh, 
a good portrait of a gentleman that happens to wear glasses. So the portrait is done very well, good background, good expression, good positioning of the subject. Does it say glasses? Well, kind of. Seven. Resting in the sun. And so that here you don't see any reflections. You see through the lenses. You have a nice shadow that complements the composition. Um, perhaps you don't need some of this. And I would have maybe darkened that a little bit so that uh, you're really looking at the glasses. And I might have brought out a little bit more, I don't know, not texture, but uh, increase the exposure just a tad on the, uh, on the glasses. But it is about glasses. And that's your thing, the seventh. Reflection. So it's exposed. I'm not sure what the reflection is. It looks like a plate with something, but it doesn't matter. There's there's something that the person is looking at, but it's definitely about glasses and everything uh, that you want to have uh, to be sharp is sharp and, and good exposure. Seven. Seeing into infinity and beyond. Definitely about glasses. Um, my preference might have been to straighten the lines, the vertical lines, but that's 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 me. I don't like lines like that. But I think it works well. And in this composition, not straightening works well. I like the uh, infinity effect. Nothing's extraneous. The um, the upper left doesn't detract. This doesn't detract. If anything, I would have selected those two portions and darkened them just a little bit. But it definitely uh, emphasizes the theme and it's executed quite well. A seven. Eyes of the Beholder. So good exposure. Background is treated well. It's minimal minimalized. I would just I'd clone that stuff out. Um, and here it's very clear what the wearer of the sunglasses is looking at in addition to the cameraman, you know, the, the car, the reflection. And it's and that's in focus. And it's exposed well. A seven. Eyeglass wear. Creative, done well. Black and white makes you focus on the geometry. And I'm just wondering why the um, the glass with the glasses is a little bit off off center. Uh, again, I my preference would have been to center it. But as presented, I think it's very clever and well executed. Seven. Which eyeglass should I wear today? So I'm having a little bit of an issue of deciding where to look. Should I look here? Should I look here? It's almost as if there are two images in one. Um, 
And given the way in which the image was cropped, I think if it was, if this was your image, maybe over here, it would more strongly say eyeglasses and it wouldn't cause you to look somewhere else because although the eyeglasses are merging, which in this case is fine, and you're focusing right there. And I think you could have gotten even tighter on the glasses, a seven. A life of their own at midnight. So here the uh, we see the entirety of the two eyeglasses, uh, but I think the eyeglasses are competing now with the image on the computer. And with the with this background, I'm okay with the uh, with the filter that was applied. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't detract from the image, it complements it for seven. Perfect fit. Again, a, a lot of creativity. Um, Great exposure, great expression, and you know it has you doing a double take. Uh, the only thing I would question is why the two profiles are not symmetrical. With because in fact, I would assume this image was created, and somehow the the, the profile was merged into the front view. So here you see almost all the ear. And here you don't. Um, but it does say eyeglasses. You're definitely looking at that and wondering, you know, they're, they're, the earpieces are going to the uh, profiles. How did that happen? A seven. Transition. So an image well done of a woman that happens to be wearing sunglasses. It doesn't say to me, this is an image about sunglasses. It's an, an, a, a portrait uh, and, and a nice portrait with a soft tonality. And um, hair is well lit. So that the image is well done. I would... Uh, Tone down the, the hand a little bit because you really want to call attention to the face and not the hand. A seven. Me. No, I, I think in this, in this case, because it's such a tight shot, you can't help but look at the eyeglasses. Yes, you're looking at the face and the beard and the texture. Uh, and the lightness, the exposure for the glasses has been adjusted. So you, it's a little bit lighter, so you're drawn to them. And, and again, another creative, uh, creative image, a seven. Interesting. Okay. Well, I hope I'm being consistent, but again, this is a more of a portrait of a gentleman with glasses reading, almost looks like he's reading with his eye closed, um, and not so much about glasses, uh, six. Today's selection is?
though I like the way they've been arranged and the differentiation between the yellow, the black, and the clear. You got to watch on this upper part here, the earpieces getting cut off or being very close to the top. And I think that's something that could have easily been uh, been corrected with a little bit of cloning and maybe adding just a little bit to the uh, size of the image on the top. The, the lighting is good. You have shadows. The shadows are mild. They're not detracting. And the pattern, um, I think, enhances the, uh, the storytelling of Seven. Okay, round two. Try us, please. Seven. Selfie reflection in sunglasses. Eight. Optometrist. Seven. Resting in the sun. Um, seven. Reflection. Seven. Seeing into infinity and beyond. Nine. Eyes of the beholder. Eight. Eyeglass wear. Nine. Which eyeglass should I wear today? Seven. A life of their own at midnight. Seven. Perfect fit. Nine. Transition. Seven. Me. Eight. Today's selection is? Eight. Okay. Well, we have first, second, and third from here. Okay, the uh, the glasses resting on the glasses first. Okay. Second is this one. That's third. Eyeglass, group two, third place, perfect fit, Dave Cohn. Dave, great job. Second place, seeing into infinity and beyond, Harvey, once again, terrific job. And first place, eyeglass wear, Dan, this, tonight is your night, <laughs> first place. Okay, and that concludes it. Uh, I'm curious about the picture of the gentleman uh, where we had the two pro profiles merged with the frontal and how that was done. Okay, let's, let's hold on a second. Let me stop sharing. And if you, you know, if you'd like, you can just turn on your sound again. All right, who was the, uh, that was third place, was it? I think so. I think that was Dave. Dave? Uh, Dave's uh, got his. Oh, he's not here? No, he is here. Oh. I just asked him to unmute. I'm sorry. Yeah, when I get that was really interesting the way he did that. It, yeah, it was. Yeah. I guess we're not. I, mean, I guess we're not. No. All, All right. right. Maybe he'll 
Maybe he'll send um, uh, an email. And let us know how he did that. Yeah, and I'll uh, send it. I'll send it over. Yeah, I'd be interested. So yeah. Thank you, for, thank you for having me. Thank I you. One is doing well and doing well in the. Will do well in the future and staying safe. Well, okay. Was, uh, very good comments. Thank you. They were very helpful. Good to see you, Alan. Glad you're feeling better. Yes. Take care of yourself and keep away from COVID. <laughs> well, yes. If I if I knew where COVID was, 